In this podcast series presented by Boss, we journey into the lives of inspiring creators, artists, and athletes, unearthing the pivotal moments that shape them into the unique bosses and leaders that they are today. Join us as we go Behind the Boss. I'm Raven Smith, and in today's episode of Behind the Boss, we are talking to Anthony Joshua. Anthony, hello. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? All is well. Good. That's good to hear. Um, let's just jump straight in. Tell me about your first pair of boxing boots and boxing gloves. So the thing I love about boxing, you don't need much. So I started in my trainers mm -hmm. and then the first pair of boots I got were 25 pound boots. Yeah. Cheap, cheerful. They're probably <laughs> the best boots I had. Yeah. Not technical but they worked and that's all you need in boxing. And uh, the first pair of gloves are those stinky ones that you find in the cupboard. Yeah. That have been there for like, you know, 30 years. Hand me down. It's just hand me down, yeah. down, down, down. And they're the gloves that I use in there. They were good enough to work with at yeah. the time. And they got me to where I needed to before I could invest in my own equipment. So were you bare knuckle boxing before you put your gloves on or did you go to the club and that was it? Me on the mean streets of Watford, yes. <laughs> bare knuckle boxing. But, <laughs> but nah, when I went to the boxing club, that's when I got into like more of the equipment, the gum shield, yeah. protectors, yeah. boxing boots, um, the gloves. And there's so many different brands for different reasons. And that's when you start realizing that certain things protect knuckles, wrists, yeah. um, cartilages, bones and stuff. So it's whatever potential injuries you have there's a specific boxing glove for that. Okay, okay. And uh, did you just fall in love with it straight away? So I actually started, like, I went to a boxing gym in Watford when I was, like, 15, mm -hmm. and I thought, this is torture. This okay. ain't, yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> torture. Boxing is a real labour man sport, and at the time, I don't think I was mentally ready. Yeah. But then when I went back again when I was 18, I fell in love with it because everything's about timing. Mm. If the timing's right, and you fall into the right place at the right time, mm. or as they say, wrong place at the wrong time, mm -hmm. it can go either way. And luckily it was the right place at the right time. Yeah, that is a metaphor for life, right? If the timing's right, <laughs> If the time it's is right. right, it's right. Yeah, there's nothing like, you know, divine timing. Yeah, I would, sorry, I, I assume that your first pair of boxing gloves were like tiny, like a doll's, because I didn't think you were 15. I thought you'd be like three or four. I thought <laughs> no, they were like little no, pocket no, no. ones. Okay, 50. I wasn't like one of those child proteges. Like, <laughs> no. no. Oh, but that's quite cool too. Anyway, yes. um, how, when was your first like bo proper boxing fight and how did it feel? So first proper boxing match was, I must have been about, I had just turned 18. Mm -hmm. So this is probably, when I started boxing, I was at, probably like 19. Yeah. Probably like 19. I was about 19 years old um, in Kentish Town. So it was like a pub. Mm. So it was in Kentish Town in a pub and we used to rent this hall. So it was on top of the pub. So you got downstairs of the pub, but you would walk through the pub. Everyone yeah. like, we go and jump in. And you would cut through <laughs> the back door, go upstairs. And we would then walk to the back basement. And that's where our changing rooms would be. And everyone's going through the same thing. Yeah. Everyone, it's like a gladiatorial moment. You're in the basement. You can hear the cheers because there's other people competing before mm. you. So you can hear people cheering. You get to see the comp uh, competitors coming back down the stairs. Some beaten. Broken men. Yeah, some are broken <laughs> men. Some are winning. Victors. So mentally, you make a decision what category you want to put yourself in. And yeah. naturally, you're going to go with the winners. So you start locking in like, All right, I need to focus. And it's nerve wracking. Mm. But it used to take me back to a time. Yeah? I went on this ride. Um, at a theme park called mm -hmm. No Way Out. Mm -hmm. And it was like a ride where once you cross the line, you're not allowed to go back. Yeah, And uh, it was called No Way Out. And that's the same as boxing. Once mm. I sign up for it, once I walk in that stadium, which is now, but when I walked in that pub, which was back then, yeah. there's no way out. Once I've committed and I get to that arena, I've got to go through um, that arena, get to the ring and go through whatever is about to present itself to me in the ring. So mentally, the pub is the same as the Olympic Stadium, in a way. <laughs> Honestly, there, as long as you know there's no way out and you mm. have to face it, you have to go through it, it's the same. It's all the same. Just the environment changes, but the principle remains the same. I feel like maybe the, the cheers and boos are louder. But is it backstage in the changing room? The what difference between the, the people in the pub watching yeah. boxing and, you know... The cheers and boos are definitely a lot louder. Yeah. <laughs> the cheers and boos are definitely a lot louder, but it comes with the territory. And the louder they are, the better it is because that means that boxing's thriving and you're part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I, I, like, my feeling would be if I heard 
the cheers and boos would make me feel um, like one way or the other, more nervous or less nervous. But it sounds like when you hear the cheers and boos, you just decide you're going to hear cheers for you. And then you go out there. (laughs) Focus on the positive. Yeah. Because like, to block out the booze, it takes too much energy. Yeah. To block out negativity, it takes too much energy. So for me, I just absorb all that positive energy. Mm. I haven't got to spend no energy blocking anything out. I just absorb that positive energy and just ride that wave to the ring. And once that first bell goes, you're in the zone. Love that. Um, any advice that was given to you at that age that has stayed with you? Any advice that was given to me at that age? Um, Boxers are known to be, you know, uh, broken nose, mm-hmm. broken eye socket, not mm-hmm. be able to string a sentence together. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah? Name no names. Yeah. Like, do, 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 um, do, <laughs> Cauliflower ear. Yeah. I all know. of that. Yeah. It's a real rough man sport. So conduct myself properly, mm. um, read, mm. study, and make decisions that will benefit you in the long run. So there was that element of change the narrative of what boxers are known for. Mm. So yeah, I've always made sure that I'm not, I'm not smart. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not like, I meet some smart people and mm. I'm not anywhere close near as, as intelligent they are, but I have a lot of common sense and mm. I use that in my, in my day to day life and it helps me. I, I mix with the right people. And that's one of the advice someone gave me is just read, educate yourself as much as you can and whatever industry you're in, try and change the narrative, try and add mm. and uh, be better than what the status quo is. Great. I literally want to give you an OB, another OBE. Um, <laughs> uh, who and what were some of your biggest inspirations? In boxing? Yeah. All right, look, boxing, inspirations, we only have to look at them for what they do mm-hmm. in the ring. We tend to look at a lot of people for what they do outside of their profession. Yeah. I don't support a lot of people for what they do in their private life. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So I like Mike Tyson yeah. because he embodied this discipline that was based around he got in a lot of trouble growing mm-hmm. up, uh, poverty stricken area. Um, mum was into all sorts. I think his dad was, wasn't alive at the time, kind of raised himself to a degree, was mm. in juvenile detention centers at the age of 13. His criminal record was, let's say 50 pages long. Mm. So if we were looking at someone with that type of information, we'll probably say this person's going to fail at life. They haven't got much going for them. But he changed mm. that, you know? So for me, it showed me that no matter where you begin, as long as you can apply yourself, you never know what the future holds. And he just applied himself to boxing, whether it's education, sport, whatever it is, but boxing was his chosen field. And he educated himself. He, he became a boxing encyclopedia. He studied the game. And uh, he became one of the greatest heavyweight champions, also known as the youngest heavyweight champion, that there's ever been mm. and um, I realised that if he can do it I'm not going to say I'm going to be as good as him but if the blueprint's there yeah, wake up early sleep early put the work in believe in yourself be a savage <laughs> you've got a chance of making it and with boxing in three years I walked in the gym and then three years later I became Olympic champion yeah. by embodying that mentality so I just took what I learned from him yeah. and that's why for me he's one of my favourites and inspirations Great. How did where you grew up and that area affect your career? How did it affect my career? Okay, that's good. That's a good question. <laughs> because like, everyone's like, man, you know, I grew up on the mean streets of Wilfred, <laughs> man. You know, uh, it was hard. It was hard. No, it wasn't. It was, yeah. it, was, it was actually like a really good area. It's like a borough. Yeah. So cities are massive. It's hard for people to know everyone in cities. But when you're in a borough... They're not as big as cities, but they're still big. Mm. But it felt like we knew everyone. So there was a massive community feeling. Yeah. Massive, massive community feeling. And I still have that passion for where I grew up, like that community element. So how it helped me in my career, I would say, growing up, is I was around a lot of people Mm -hmm. growing up. So I wasn't one of these, you know, child athletes that were like protected from the masses. Yeah. Like, you know, keep away, you know, he can't ride his bike and... Nah, he's got training in the morning. Yeah. I was climbing trees, mm. riding motorbikes, living normally. And then I got into boxing. So when I got into boxing and like three years later at the Olympics, world championships, European championships, all in the space of three years, changing my life around, doing interviews, mm. 
thinking, God, dear, I don't even know how to string a sentence together. Mm. And I'm sitting down on BBC News. But being around a lot of people, listening to people's stories, like we have elder people in the area that gave us wisdom, mm. whether we listened or not, but it just helped me be able to communicate with people from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. um, different religions, races, all of that stuff combined helped me be comfortable in front of all these people I was meeting later on in my life because of the success I had in sport. Mm. So growing up in a community environment helps you learn about people's traditions, cultures, mm. Um, you get to talk to different people and it helped me later on in life when I was meeting so many different people through my sport. Good answer. So tell me, how do you cope under pressure? Are there any mechanisms you use? Coping under pressure? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, you just got to go through the pressure. Mm. I don't really have any coping mechanisms. Except for if it gets too much, well, I distance myself. Okay. That's probably a way. How do you do that? Well, I don't feel like my job gives me pressure mm -hmm. because I enjoy the training. Like it's not by force, so I enjoy it, but I feel sometimes it's what comes with it. Um, on my phone, constantly, like WhatsApp, communication, phone calls. So I just distance myself sometimes and just pull myself away from the world. Mm. That's it. But yeah, I don't deal with too much pressure because I try to simplify my life as much as possible. You know, I feel, for me, the best things I get out of life is sleep. When I'm sleeping good, I feel like <laughs> the world is just designed for me. Like everything I do is perfect. So yeah. yeah, I just feel like simplify my life, distance myself sometimes and just get good sleep, good rest. And that's how I do with my pressure. Yeah. I feel like the biggest commodity used to be time, but now it's sleep. Yeah. Correct. The <laughs> biggest commodity used to be time, but sleep is, mm. is so important. Mm. So important. And once you get good sleep for me, I feel like I can deal with whatever pressure comes my way. Yeah. The minute I wake up, I feel like doosh, pressure. Yeah. Check my phone. Do you, see, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's on. It's yeah, begun. Yeah, the wheel yeah, is yeah. turning of exactly. the day. The wheel is turning. Did the pressure for you change from being kind of like a young man in these clubs and then a trajectory into something much bigger? Still that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the pressure's, I'm the same, the pressure's changed. No, so what's changed? Okay. What, what has changed is, um, the, the, I feel I put pressure on myself. I have my own expectations. Um, I don't live by anyone else's standards. I have mm. my own expectations and the pressure is how I can help people. That's mm. it. And that's my own pressure. I want to help. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I've been given an opportunity and I need to, to use that opportunity to not only help myself, but to help others as well. That's yeah. the, that's the truth. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to organize certain things in the community to help people. Yeah. I think it's clear that you're a fighter mentally as well as physically. Okay. Um, but making it to the top must have had some setbacks. Was what's gone wrong on your <laughs> on your on your journey? Start breaking down. Uh, <laughs> yeah. what, what, what's gone wrong? Mm. Is there a low point in in your career? Yeah, recently. Mm -hmm. As of recent, I lost a fight, mm -hmm. and you never really train for losses, do you? you train for mm. everything to go perfectly perfectly right perfectly well so when it doesn't go that way it's like wow mm. not reality but it's a low it's yeah. a low reality for me is winning you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. i wish i could say that we're, we're, we're winning we're winning by nature so we've got yeah. that mindset winning by nature is normal yeah so when nature takes a turn um it's a rocky time and like anything though like any disaster in the world you have to rebuild you have to rebuild so yeah, I and then I go into my coping mechanisms as mm -hmm. well. And then I also take the rough with the smooth. Like, how can I find the positive out of this situation? If I can use this to push me towards greatness, yeah, mm -hmm. I can definitely go to a next level. If I can use this situation to push me through to greatness, I can get to a next level. And I think through searching for answers, because I'm not resting on this situation, I'm actually questioning myself, searching for answers, I have to dig deep as well because mm. it's a rocky time in my life and decisions from this point forward have to be right mm. because I don't want to get it wrong again. These are all the things I'm telling myself. I actually find some really, like, really, like, important things about myself and the questions I ask myself are, are answered in a way that when things are going right, it's just like, yeah, it's great. Mm. Like, how's training? Yeah, yeah, great, great. 
how's uh how's your nutrition yeah great 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 like you're winning you're winning like you know what's wrong yeah. nothing so why t- if why it ain't broke it? don't yes. fix it so when i then lost i asked deeper questions and i found certain answers where there were little cracks and and places where i can kind of make amendments and get things better and that's yeah. where i am now yeah yeah so it was a tough time at that stage but i used that use that situation and i'm using that to fuel me towards better and bigger things yeah and i I guess you have this formula that's worked for you in your training in your nutrition in your sleep Mm -hmm. that's helped you win yes you you don't necessarily want to just drastically overhaul it because from from the one time you didn't win i get what you're saying it sounds like you're tweaking it rather than yeah keep it the same which Mm. we don't want to do Mm. completely change i think it's not always it's fine to do that but also I think adding to what we have, building on top of what we've established, because yeah. as you said, for instance, we can't let that one issue in our life define us and hold us there because we've had so many great times, so many good things come out of what we've built as well. So yeah. as I said, it's just, yeah, as you said, actually, it's just tweaking those things. That's so interesting because for me, boxing, not you, but like a lot of, it, there is a cult of kind of like, Per big, very big, it's almost like weaponized bravado outside of the ring, like walking 100%. through, like it's, very intensely kind of myth building. Yeah. You seem to be have taken this loss, not as a kind of unraveling or unspooling of what you're about, but just taking it on the chin and thought about better ways to be. 100%. It's, it's, it's interesting because we live in a world of perfection, isn't it? It's the mm. highlights, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. the highlight reel now. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> so like, That's what's stopping me sleeping. Scrolling <laughs> the everyone else. Reel, the highlight reel. Reel. Yeah. I think it affected all of us. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's like in reality, you know, when you watch the whole the whole film and you read the whole script, there's always it starts off like the journey. Mm. You can see potential, the sad part, and then it ends. Yeah, training montage. And yeah, you're, you're much better. Yeah, and that's the reality <laughs> of life. And I'm going through reality. I'm going through the real, the real script. And there are yeah. tough times. There are definitely tough times. So keep your head strong and use that pain. Yes, use it. <laughs> Let it fuel you. And yeah. that's what I've learned is let this pain I'm going through fuel me onto better things. Yeah, I was going to ask you what obstacle in your life has, has taught you a lesson, but I guess mm. this yeah. loss is just yeah. teaching it to you. And you've got to keep on digging for motivation. Mm. Like, just don't rest. Don't Well, rest like sleep, like yeah. rest your body so you have energy, yeah. but keep on digging, keep on digging, keep on poking. There was a time I would listen to like, I'll be up listening to motivational videos, listening, absorbing the information. And sometimes I just don't want to hear it. Yeah. But I kept on digging, like well, as of recent, mm. kept on searching for more information. And I'm now back to what I used to fuel me. Yeah. But if I would have given up, it would have been difficult to, have, you know, the world's moving so fast, but to latch back on mm. to the world spinning 100 mile an hour is, is a challenge in itself. Mm. So you just have to keep on trying to get your hands gripped on the task ahead and yeah. I think once you do that it's you're on that you're on that gravy train again but it's not easy when you're down when you're at rock bottom for example it's not easy but keep on keep on searching keep on asking questions yeah and you can use that to get back to where you once was and probably better in the long run knock on wood better let's not knock on that, wood let's okay, make but- it a reality <laughs> let's make it a reality uh yeah the win the win is just over the horizon correct it's coming correct correct I just want to ask you a bit about uh, being a role model. How does mm. it, how, I mean, you are a role model to young kids, not just young sporty kids. It, is it a weighty responsibility? Yeah. Pause. <laughs> and moving on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. But like, we're, we're, we're normal human beings. Mm. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm allowed to make mistakes. I'm not perfect. I mm-hmm. can definitely say I've made mistakes. And I've also had to learn from them myself as well. And it's about being real, mm. you know? So there's one Tupac saying where he's like, I don't like being a role model because it's like I'm playing a role. Mm. Um, it's, being, it's about being real, being true to who you are. And what I've learned, like I was asking myself these questions, I would prefer to be known to sit on one side of the fence and people know that I'm gonna give my honest opinion rather yeah. than sitting on the fence. That's and good. I'm playing both sides. So just be real, yeah. be true to who you are. And am I a role model? I'd rather the kids know for the mistakes I've made, but also use that 
that they can learn from me. Yeah. I'll be open and honest about the mistakes I've made only if these youngsters are going to learn from me and do better than me. Mm. They haven't got to go through what I went through. They can do it 10 times better. And as I said, like, you asked a question about who's my inspiration, mm -hmm. i.e. Mike Tyson. I used him as a fuel of inspiration to get me where I got to. Mm. I didn't have to go through what he went through. Mm. And that's what I want to give to the next generation. I'll open up about my mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's all documented now. But rather than judge, use it as motivation and inspiration to say, hang on a minute. He took a loss, but he didn't give up. Mm. He kept on going. I can do it. I can keep on going, for example. And that's, that's it for me. What's been your favourite round of your career? Boxing round? Mm -hmm. Probably the round I won. <laughs> I mean, round of the pub. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did beating Klitschko... Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, was it the best round of your career or? No, it was one of them, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because like, it was so early on in my career. Yeah. Experience is so important for anyone in any field. Yeah. And I was like, um, I'm still young, but I was like the young guy on the block. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Coming up, potential. I only had potential. And this was like a crossroads. Like, is he going to prove that he's got the grit, the heart? And I had to answer a lot of questions in that fight and I overcame mm. it. And um, it kind of catapulted me into where we are now but yeah the reason why it was probably one of my best nights and the best round i would say was round five right mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was so funny so around five ding 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 i come out and just my instinct was like come on boom, boom, boom. swinging every <laughs> punch in the book at klitschko bang <laughs> he drops yeah. and up until this stage everyone that goes down stays down yeah so i'm like <laughs> like busting my load like <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? Like, gone mad. We did it, Joe. Yeah, we did it. And then uh, I look around and he's getting up. And I'm like, yeah. Like, this ain't usually what happens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I thought, cool, whatever. Boom, 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 swinging. But yeah. this is a highly experienced competitor. Yeah. And due to my lack of experience, I've tried to take him out and I've blown a gasket. Yeah. I've blown a gasket and uh, yeah, he, he dropped me in the next round. So it was like one of those roller coaster mm. fights. Like, People supporting me were on a high. Next round, like that, people that supporting him were on a high. And then I had to answer a lot of questions. So round five was like a real roller coaster, but mm. I answered the questions where I had to dig deep. And it led me on to an 11th round victory. Yeah, I, congratulations. But also, I just have this vision of him like, uh, in the thriller video, like coming back to life. <laughs> my <laughs> uncle said, my down. uncle said, yeah, he, he saw me going mad yeah. and he was going mad because it's like corner to corner. The referee points you to the corner. Yeah. So like they're going mad for me. And then he said, he's like, <sighs> and he said he could see Klitschko just rising. Like, <laughs> or like, like, you know, like the thriller, like doom, doom, yeah. doom like getting up. <laughs> like, yeah. And he was, but my back's kind of like turned and I'm like going mad. And yeah. Um, when I turn around, I realise, all right, cool, this guy, he's here to fight. He's not here to lay down. Yeah, what a thing to experience, though, because I, I appreciate there's ups and downs in any kind of match, but you yeah. are this kind of, like, yep, this up-and-coming, yeah. like, hungry for it, and you're, yeah. you're just, like, you've got this veteran. This veteran that knows what he's doing. Phenomenal. That ain't going to let Who knows you young... can get back up. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> looking at me like I'm green. I'm a novice. There's no yeah. way I'm going to lose it. It's pride, in it? So he got up, probably not just because of technical ability that's that when you're down it's about pride and he yeah. had a whole heap of that yeah he was hard to take out but it was a great fight really good fight well done um well, i was gonna ask a, a bit more about what goes through your head before you go out what, what were you thinking before you went out into that match loads of things like god i'm tired like, <laughs> yeah I, mean, I swear it's like i'm tired because you want everything to be perfect this yeah. is like your exam night yeah. You know, you've done all your study and all your theory, you practiced, and now this is the time where the test, the day of the test, isn't it? So yeah. you know, have I brought my pencil? Have I brought my this and that? How do I feel? So you, all of these things are going through my head. Have I got my things organized? Am I well rested? Mm -hmm. Toilet? Um, then it just gets closer and closer and closer. And as I said to you, the same principles mm -hmm. from day one still stand today. Is There's no turning back. If I didn't want to be here today, I, w I should have cancelled three to four months ago. Yeah. I've known about this day for three to four months. Yeah. Let's go and have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go out there and have fun. Let's rock the world. 
Does it feel, it must, it must feel different because I, I understand that in your head you're like, this is just the same, but like, you've not got those gloves from the back of the box, from the PE yeah. kit, from like the, we yeah. had this thing at school, it's like, if you've got your PE kit, there was just a bin for the, the PE kits, you, so you could just take whatever, so it, it must, yeah. you must, does it change, did it make you more or less certain having like the better equipment, True. knowing, you know? It, it does. It's good and it's bad. Mm. It's good and it's bad because how did I get from zero to at the Olympics in three years mm -hmm. with that back of the room PE equipment? Yeah. Because it was passion. It was raw. Yeah. It was just hunger. And then we can take our mind away from that and focus more on like, you know, what color gloves am I wearing? I don't want the, I don't want the gold ones. I said, I want the black ones. Yeah. And that's, it don't matter what gloves I've got. Give me any, I'll, Beat this guy bare knuckle. Yeah. That's the energy a fighter needs to have. Yeah. So that rawness is important. It's so important. So you always, I think it's always important. And a lot of people, like when you listen to certain music that takes you back mm. to the good days. And we always talk about back in the day. So mm. always remember what got you where you are, why you started this journey. Yeah. And it's important, I think, in a fighter's career to always take themselves back and remember what, what were your principles and live by them. And that was, for me... I know I can take this guy out. I believe I can, and I'll show you I can do it. Yeah. And yeah, not the technical ability. Like I can outbox him. I can slip a punch here. I'm going to counter him. Now nah, I'm going to beat this guy. What's the energy? Simple, that energy. Yeah. yeah. Great. Do you have any superstitions before you fight? Well, I have like these, I just wear these, not the same socks. I wash them. I've got I just keep it simple. Those same socks, socks you found at the back of the, yeah, the in back the, of the gym. pub. <laughs> yeah. So same, like the socks, probably just same protector. Yeah. What is, if it, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, as I said, boxing is rough and raw. Um, so yeah, it, they say it's hard to wake up and run 10 miles when you're sleeping in silk pajamas. Yeah. So you want to keep rough and ready. So for me, keep it rough, keep it ready. So for me, simple. Yeah, superstition, keep it simple. Same socks, same, sock, same routine. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Um, the London 2012 Olympics where you won gold. It was obviously yeah. a big moment. Yeah. Uh, did that spur you onto thinking you could do greater things or was that something you had in mind already? No, like, remember, I was like still, still in my flat, mm. still with the family, with all the boys. It was in London, mm. so like it's just like popping down the road. <laughs> you got the bus to the Olympics. I did swear you? down, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's been an interesting career. Like yeah. sometimes I think, should I have been more professional? <laughs> yeah. But we're, it's just who I am. So yeah, the Olympics was good. But when I won, I knew I'd win. You know, I had my reasons. Like, I knew and I'd fought a lot of these guys. Mm. I knew about like fighting in your home country, what that means as well. So like home, hometown advantage and all that type of stuff. Yeah. It was all like, I knew I just had to go in there, win four fights to become Olympic champion. Mm. And I'd fought in the world championships before. I'd fought like six fights to get to the final. And um, I got a silver. So I knew I had a great chance to yeah. win. I was an unknown entity. And then, so, but it was now the question after winning is, okay, what I then realized why well, you have to be switched on and not be that boxer that's like, oh, yeah, I've won. Like, great. Like, let's go out. It was like, okay. <laughs> At first, this is for young boxers coming up, yeah? They want all the Olympians. Mm. The media want all the Olympians. Yeah. It's, a, it's an Olympian frenzy. Yeah. Then sooner or later, they only want the medalists. Yeah. Then sooner or later, they only want <laughs> the gold and the silver medalists. Yeah. And sooner or later, they only want the gold medalist. And sooner or later, the next Olympic comes around and your former Olympian. Yeah. So I had to capitalize and um, I had to make crucial decisions to catapult me to the next level. And that was the hardest part of my career now is sitting with all the men in suits and all mm. the ladies in suits. You and your medal. Yeah, me and my medal. <laughs> you know, getting yeah, in everywhere. Still, yeah. <laughs> but you got a table. Oh, what's that? My, my medal dropped out. What's oh, yeah. That that noise? <laughs> oh, that's my, my medal. I'm so sorry. Yeah. It's meant to be in the trophy case. <laughs> <laughs> but like it, it was a it was a time to capitalize on that hype and um I, we brought boxing to the forefront yeah um so thank god everything fell in fell into place like the olympics 2012 being in london being a heavyweight 
and they're making the right decisions. So, yeah. It must have been interesting in the lead up to the Olympics because the mood was not necessarily an excited anticipation. Mm. I felt in London, at least, I was like, how am I going to get to work? They were like, <laughs> you can't, you won't be able to get yeah. a bus for two weeks. And I was yeah, like, this is yeah, going to be yeah, so yeah, awful. Yeah. And yeah. the second there was the opening ceremony, yeah. the, the, the see the, t the tide completely turned yeah. on like everyone was raving about the olympics sports brings major investment mm. it's a great time for like businesses to to promote their their product their materials um uh, rentals and uh, mm. cabs um so food restaurants they it brings in tourism yeah so as you said, like it's a headache at the start, but the Olympics help boost the economy. Yeah. And as we're coming out of like the 2008 like recession, the mm -hmm. global recession, I think the Olympics 2012 was like the time things started getting better. Yeah. So even me, I had to build alongside that as an athlete when I turned professional in 2013. We had to kind of really push boxing to the forefront because people weren't investing in boxing. Yeah. And stuff. So even though it, was, it wasn't capturing like the um, the mindset of people. Pete, you were more interested in your bills and getting to work than you was the Olympics. I just think it wasn't an excited anticipation at a public level. And yeah. yet you are training to win, regardless to win, of what everyone's saying about it. But yeah. the second it started, it was, it was everyone buzzing. was like, yes, Cause sports, this is brilliant. Everyone gets involved. <laughs> yeah. Restaurants are buzzing. Yeah. Everyone's buzzing. So it was a great time, you know. And as I said, it was helping boost the economy, yeah. foreign investment, all that good stuff. So yeah, the Olympics, as you said, behind the scenes, it's not really it's like, oh, the Olympics, but once it kicks off and mm. you see all that hard work come to fruition, it, sports is the greatest, like, it's so fun for everyone. Yeah. So tell me, how did it feel winning an OBE at such a young age? Fun? For me, it was just all fun. Yeah. Amongst all the crazy stuff that happens, mm. I felt like I'm just going back home after all of this. Yeah. You know. On the bus. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> Let's do a lap of the Olympic Park on the way. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just like, what does it all mean? Yeah. It, you know, I think it will mean more when I'm finished competing, but at the time I'm getting it, it's like, oh, I'm going back home to, yeah. you know, an untidy bedroom after. It's like reality. You're going back to reality. It's like, I step up, collect yeah. the OBE, I'm an important man. And once I leave, it's like back to reality. <laughs> That's the same for the Queen. She goes back to her grubby bedroom. <laughs> I, I, I highly doubt it. people and back to the pigsty. <laughs> I highly doubt it. Yeah. But that's it, honestly. It's great. It's, um, and, and it's good for like the next generation. Yeah. Family, friends and stuff. But I do think to myself, when it's all done, it's, I just go back to reality. Yeah. So I don't let it, I don't let it get to me or, or anything like that. No, it doesn't. Yeah. It's something well, you should be really proud of, but not, I appreciate that you, you don't strike me as the kind of person who's going to be like a div about it. Yeah. <laughs> not going to yeah. make a thing of it. Nah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But it's, it's huge. It's a, it is good. It is good. It is definitely good. But for, for the person receiving it is how you use it to inspire the masses. Yeah. That's why I said I'm going to try and put these medals in the Watford Museum. Okay. So people can go there, feel it, see it. He done it. I can do it. Yeah, you know. it's real for them too. Exactly. So, so where are the where are the medals at the moment? <laughs> that way. Somewhere safe. <laughs> somewhere very safe. Nah. Okay. Nah. Yeah, okay. Well, now we know. <laughs> um, my last question: what, yeah. What's next for Anthony Joshua? Um, How do you keep motivated after reaching such heights? Honestly, I think simplifying matters in life. Yeah where we spoke about earlier good rest mm. for me is like it's the best when i wake up feeling good i think mm. i just feel like i can conquer anything so what's next for me is focusing on good sleep and then conquering whatever comes my way because life comes at us fast mm. so yeah if i'm if i'm ahead of time i feel i can kind of dodge what i want to dodge but if i'm just waking up and things are just hitting me it's hard yeah. to stay out of the way of things you know things are just getting too much so I think good rest, wake up early, feeling fresh ahead of time. I can then handle what's coming at me yeah. one by one. Less reactive. Honestly, proactive. Yeah, yeah. 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 What about you? What's next for you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, my, my, my last bonus question. Yeah. Um, in three words, what are the traits that you believe make a good boss? A good boss? Mm-hmm. Just in three words? Yeah. Three words? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do it in three words. Okay. I'm going to be unique. Okay. But I'm probably going to do it in one way, in, in, say it in one way, is um, a good boss, they lead for the people. Mm. Yeah? 
when I say that is like you have to fight for your employees, for your team. Mm. It's a team effort. No, there's not one, like the boss doesn't take all the credit. It's a team effort and that's what's important. That's what makes up a boss is someone who fights for his team. Mm -hmm. um, when we go out to war, when we go out to conquer, when we get no, new launches out of the way, we want to kind of fulfill a goal that all of us do well, that yeah. all of us take credit for this. We all stand as a team collectively and that's a, a boss brings that unity to the people, doesn't stand up there alone and takes all the credit. I think a boss should always fend for the people. Very good. Loved it. Um, Anthony Joshua, thank you. I could talk all day, but... Thank you very much. All day. Thank, thank you, you for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to Behind the Boss with your host, that's me, Raven Smith. If you want to find out more about what it takes to be a boss and the stories behind the inspirational figures of today, new episodes of this podcast are out every two weeks. Make sure to tune in. <laughs>